Hi, this is Shelly and I'm coming to you today with a little video tutorial um, for the images that you submitted this month for the Breakfast Out Club Challenge and I'm going to piggyback a little bit on the photos on some of the comments that Lee's made uh, and then a few others that I just like so um, let's start here this is probably one of the more difficult ones but it's not too difficult okay in Lightroom and I just popped over here into the develop mode module so in Lightroom just like Photoshop or a number of other programs that you might use you can change an image to black and white in a number of ways one is right here at the top you can just pop it into a black and white so quick and easy start with your color have a black and white one of the ways that I really like to do it is leave it in color and come down here. Um, one of the things too, this one is really, really contrasty. So we could pull out some contrast that actually makes it look quite nice just doing that. Um, pull out that contrast again, let's see. So it, it helped just right off the bat to do that come down here to this where you have these color sliders it's under HSL color and black and white and you can just hit the black and white button and you see how you've got all these sliders just resetting them because it was done under an auto setting um, so again you can see where you started and where you are now it actually looks quite nice I think some of what helped that was just to pull down this contrast slider from zero went down to about 25 so that helped quite a bit um, and in under here then we can do it by color so I know there's a lot of orange in this so I could pull it down and make it really really dark unfortunately what happens is we make most of the when I click up here everything that's now that really dark blue or that neon blue is um, solid black with no details so obviously we don't want that so let's pop that back up and a lot of times I'll use these sliders really extreme to see what's happening where is that orange showing up so I actually want to just brighten it up a little bit not a lot it doesn't take a lot on these sliders there's some red in the shadows so I want to open up some of those shadows so I'm going to brighten up everything going to the right is making it brighter everything going to the left is making it darker and then I'm going to darken down the yellow is pretty much the highlight bright areas so I'm going to pull that part down a little bit and I think the only other color left is some blue down here at the bottom down in the shadows so I just want to open that up a little bit we're not going to get all of this black some of this black is just solid black and I don't think there's much of any way without really going too far of adjusting that so open that up a little bit there's some green in there but I guess we could pull that down a little bit all right so here's where we started and here's our black and white go to the next one this shot very interesting texture we've got a couple of things um, nudging their way into this shot which we would want to eliminate so we would do that really quickly with our crop tool right here when I click the crop tool we get this nice little roll of thirds um, if you have the lock up it means you can move move any of the edges at will if you crop the lock down then it holds the constraints of the photo there's no right or wrong answer to that it's just your preference sometimes I like to keep the constraints and other times I don't feel it necessary so the two things that I'm most concerned about is that top edge which I already got rid of and then this little bottom shelf of snow here so I'm going to crop in just enough to get rid of that 
Now the other thing that that maybe an issue which I might want to get rid of a little bit is here but let's just take a look so there you go we've gotten rid of any distraction up here at the top looks like there might be a little bit I think I moved up so we got rid of all the distraction up here at the top and that little shelf of snow here at the bottom so that looks really nice I would also it's a little bit um, gray a little bit flat um, snow shouldn't be gray so I would also put a tone curve a tone curve really is something that I use on every image um, just helps everything it's part of the basic process which you would want to don't want to blow it out too much so over here on your histogram hovering over the right corner shows me what is blown out or um, is a little bit too white so a little bit of red I don't mind if I had a whole chunk of red I'd want to pull back so just a little bit of brightness and that tone curve is what pulled off see that blue kind of blue gray um, flat feeling to this shot the tone curve is what popped that off very good I really like this. It's a nice, interesting abstract pattern, colors, bright and vivid. Uh, very nice. This shot, uh, Lee's mentioned, I really like it as well. I'd put a tone curve on there, but before I did that, I would come in here and just give it a rotate. Um, I think try it both ways. I think it looks better, best this way with the darkness down at the bottom. And then let's give it a little tone curve as well. And we didn't do a whole lot by way of um, adjustments there, but the, the turning was the critical part here. And where I turned that was in the library mode with these arrows right here. Just click it. And it turns and the next one nice I really like this you notice there's nothing but the rope a few leaves that are scattered around on it but nothing intruding into the edges or the corners very nice here again nothing intruding just nothing but the onions another one with no intrusion really like this nice shallow depth of field I really like the texture of the rust here um, nice color very well done very interesting shot um, this is another crop shot so there's just a little bit of this dark color coming in here on this left edge and down here at the left corner so you want to I'm gonna lock lock it down on this one and just pull in ever so slightly on the edge when you crop you usually want to try and keep as much of the image as you can again that will determine what your end results are as far as size of the image so you always want to try and keep the biggest size you possibly can um, so that was that just one little if I if I do the before and after you're just going to see the crop unfortunately it never shows you the before crop and the after crop that's one thing I wish it did show this next shot I really like this shot a lot um, really bright vivid colors very interesting idea I like the repetitive action of the bubble here with the circles in the background the glass is right in the center and we never want to do that really so I'm gonna come in here and give it another crop I'm gonna take it into a square come in here I might want to go all the way over like this but what I really don't want to do is crop off the edge of the glass I want to keep that full full flow of the glass so maybe come just like that take it right to the edge and you'll notice now that the stem of the glass is right on that third line. 
So very quick and easy fix on that one. There is a little bit of that yellow and that's that nitpicky thing. So I would want to come over just enough to get rid of that, that yellow edge and keep this as close to the, set, the third line as I could. There. Now we got a little bit of red one here. So I'd probably want to mess with that just a little bit to, you know, a little bit more or less of that red one. So that it, it felt balanced. Um, but I really like that. I really like that as a square crop as well. This is a very interesting shot. Snow or ice um, on the window. Very interesting. It looks like lace. Uh, this one I would also, first of all, give it a crop. I'm not so worried about it being constrained. So I'm going to unlock it. And then I'm going to come up here on the bottom. That's the part that's bothering me. That part, the window sill ledge, doesn't really seem to have a place or a purpose in this. There's a little edge of white here on the right. So I'm going to come in and clip that off. And then let's take a look. There's one little bright spot. This this edge is darker. There's like a white circle-ish coming in there. So I want to pull that edge in just a little bit to eliminate that as well. When you look at your photos, look edge to edge and corner to corner and watch for those distracting elements. And it's okay to go in there and crop at once and take a look around and see what's popping in and distracting you. Very, very like that a lot. I would also put a tone curve on here. Let's go up in our whites and down in our black. Looking at my histogram, I know I can go quite a ways, but I don't like to use any of my sliders too terribly much, so I like to do nice, easy adjustments. So we're still, in our histogram, we're still a ways away from blowing out any of the highlights or being fully black, but that little bit made a big difference. So this one looks a little bit flat and by putting that tone curve on we see a lot more details in the the ice image. Very very cool. Very nice idea. Um, the color is a little bit blue which you might want to keep or you could change it. Let's see. Now what I did was grab the color picker. So if you knew that this was actually gray, you could come in here and see the uh, thumbnail over here and see what it's going to change to. So you could look for a part that really was more or less gray and click on it, changes the color. Or you can come over here Oh, I don't have, when you shoot in raw, you have a lot of, of white balance uh, options listed under here, but we only have JPEGs to work with. So this is one way to do that, is just use the color picker. But you need to be careful about that. You can get totally the wrong kind of color. Like that, that's not the right kind of color. So again, it's one of those things you can play with. Or you can go back always to as shot. I do like it. Uh, not, not like, maybe about like that. A little bit of that blue color, but not quite as um, neon blue. Very interesting shot. And tone curve. Let's go up. Again, looking at my histogram, I know there's a ways to go. 25. A little bit more than I normally do. Maybe 10. And I also brighten this one up a little bit. You can use exposure, which tends to um, brighten a little bit more in the highlight areas. Or you can use brightness, which tends to 
brighten up the entire image. And I don't want to do it too much. I don't want to overdo it. So let's see how that did. So you see how it's a little bit flat here. And now we have a lot more pop and a lot more definition in the details. And we didn't do that with sharpening or anything else. We did that just with putting a tone curve on there and giving it a little bit of brightness. Here's another one. Nicely done. I'm going to put the crop tool on just because I want to see where the thirds is. So here, oh, this is really hard to see on this one, sorry. The third line runs right here. And our circle's right here. So you might, you could, oh, let me lock it down. You could crop in just a little bit and put that circle right on the thirds line quite strongly. And then I would pop a tone curve on here again. Maybe 20. And there's not a lot of black in here, so I can pull this down quite strong as well. Maybe 25. And that's very, very subtle. But again, you see how the flat, the flat gray look. Sorry, I've been sick, so I have a little catch in my throat. The um, the gray flat um, look here is totally removed, sort of like stripped off, like a little bit of film. And the colors start to pop, and the details start to pop out a little bit more as well. Really important with texture shots. And we've got this guy. Um, I really like this image. It's a nice product shot. And just to... I won't be able to do exactly what Lise was talking about as far as a macro shot. It's not going to quite look like that. But if we lock down the edge, lock down the crop here, and come in, and come up, And then look at it with nothing but just the product, nothing with just the yarn. So the whole image is filled with just the texture of the yarn. Now if we had done this with a macro lens or something, it would look quite different. But I just wanted to show you what it might look like um, a little bit, give you a little idea um, about what Lise was talking about. So there you have it. You guys did a really, really good job this month. I'm really impressed with the shots that came out of this challenge. Um, very well done. Some of these shots are, you know, as far as we can tell by the little tiny thumbnails. Um, some of you guys are, are ready to upload these and a few of you need to do a little tweaking and or um, just keep working at it. You guys are really coming a long ways. So nice job.